Meditation is the act of coming home. to the sweet home of the real self. <clears throat> we have been wandering as nomads for eons in the alienated realm of experience, carrying the burden of a false self. seeking the truth, seeking the healing love that is absent from that plane of unreality, seeking the power of liberation without realizing that all along it was within us. As the self that is doing the very seeking. But once we entered that realm of experience and took on the mask, the persona that we are, were obliged to do, to be compatible and simpatico with the others in that realm. We gradually forgot the real dimension of our true being. It is that forgetting of our real dimension that is our dementia. And once we lose touch with that, we suffer from an intractable illness. We can call it AIDS, acquired immortality dissociation syndrome. We forget the immortal self and identify with the mortal organism. And then suddenly the frame of reference of our consciousness collapses into a tunnel vision of survival and security, <clears throat> desire and demand and a will to power and all of the other pathologies that are inherent to the ego. And as the fear of mortality and death and loss of power and of life becomes a belief system, even though it's an illusion because life itself is immortal. Living organisms die, but life does not, nor does mind nor does the greater awareness from which mind emanates. But once we have become indoctrinated into the belief that the realm of experience, the realm that we call the material realm, is reality, and the mind is just an epiphenomenon created by chemical actions of neurons in the brain, then we have lost touch with the truth of our being. And the entire educational system of this plane has the intention of keeping you in that state of dementia of loss of the empowerment that comes from realizing the true dimension of your being. Because <clears throat> once you have bought into the system of belief that you are a mortal being, you are trapped in neediness, in lack, in desire, in fear and are completely controllable 
by others who to compensate for their fear need to have power over whoever they can. And so once we are born, we are born into a system and then into a nested system of systems, beginning with the dyadic system of infant and mother. And it's that system that operates at the core of the ego identity that wants to repeat the patterns of that system which is why it gets involved in love affairs that try to recapitulate that original dyadic system. But once it has been weaned from that system and has entered into the nuclear family system, then it takes on a role in that dysfunctional family that compensates for the lack that is generalized in that system. And then it is introduced into the school system and the general social system. And in each of those systems, more of our power to remember who we are is lost. And we become more attached to the identities into which we are indoctrinated that serve forces alien to life. At some point, the urge to break free from those systems becomes strong enough to enable one to individuate and to begin to think for oneself. <clears throat> but it becomes a problem when we realize that language, which is our tool for thinking, is itself an alien system and that the solution to the problems of life cannot be solved through thought that occurs in language because language itself is part of the system that creates those problems. The structure of language divided into subject and object and into the objectivity of everything in the world creates the duality and the sense of loneliness and of attachment and identification with the body that is the very condition of our capture in illusion. And so a time comes when we recognize that what we need to do is to learn to think beyond language. That language is only one tool of thought. And of course, the mind has created many such tools. Art is another, mathematics is another, music is another. And all of these can create feeling states of remembrance of that which you are beyond the explicit objectifications that language produces in our consciousness. But then we must go to that recognition of what is the producer of art and music and poetry and the capacity to recognize and love beauty and love love and love the intelligence that is aware of the beauty of love. And it is in this seeking of the source, <clears throat> the source of the intelligence that creates language and that creates all of the powers of creativity that emerge as various fields of activity, but is behind them all, that we begin to return to that immortality of being that is no longer limited by an identification with the mortal body or the mind determined by the conditionings and paradigms of the educational systems through which we have 
been indoctrinated and have lost our true nature. But that nature is sparked again and revived as we return to the silence of pure presence. And in this silence and stillness, the self, in returning to itself, begins to feel the power of its own energy field, the luminosity of our being. And not only a state of peace and serenity, but of a kind of divine empowerment begins to envelop us and not only descend into us but emanate out of us and a realization that this self that is feeling all of this is in a dimension that is beyond no longer of the world even if you feel that you're still in it but a shift comes, a tipping point, after which you realize that you are not a being in the world, but the world is within your being as a dream. And you are inherently and forever free. It is simply the choice to remain in that freedom beyond the matrix, beyond the identifications and limitations of language that then allow you to use language and art and all of the powers of our creative intelligence to express and share with those other aspects of the one self who have not yet fully remembered and returned. Maps and images of the way back home and testimonies of the beauty of that home and the joy of liberation from the bondage of the false self. The problem is not that freedom is so far away that you can't reach it or it takes forever to get there. The problem is that it's too close to be able to see it. The eye cannot see itself. And so our capacity for vision has to turn inward to rediscover the source of our own awareness and to abide as awareness of the awareness, not of the objects that language persuades us are out there, but to refine the in here that produces the out there. And then that inhereness becomes inherently the out thereness as well. And we realize with a great laugh that we never left home at all. and have simply been wandering in a hologram of our own creation. In a journey through our own imagination. In order to enjoy the bliss of that eternal return.
the inherent and eternal nature of the self is that still point of silent presence that is no thing and yet the capacity to imagine everything and the capacity to reorder things that have gotten chaotically out of control through our identification with the chaos and complexity rather than the absolute simplicity that is the root of all. And it was all done because of the enjoyment of that complexity, of getting lost in those labyrinths of illusion that created every possible kind of sensuous enjoyment and of mental and emotional stimulation. But when the time comes that the dividends diminish and the energies of life feel exhausted and the pollution of the environment through the malpractice of our participation in the world of experience have caused the powers of death to override those of life. then we know it is time to return to the source of life, to restore the paradise of reality that we have destroyed through our loss of consciousness and moral strength and to regain that power through the rediscovery of who and what we are. Now is that time. May we have the courage to take the inward journey to self-liberation.